Shelley and Donald Rubin are our winners, co-founders of the wonderful Rubin Museum of Art, who have done so much to help Americans understand India, its culture, and its people. The museum hosts a collection of Himalayan art from Tibet, India, and other parts of South Asia. The Rubin's love of the arts from India and the neighboring regions is a 40-year-old love story. The museum staged, its first ma staged the first major shows on Sikh and Jain art in New York City. India's genuine friends in the West, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shelley and Donald Rubin. Well, my husband Donald and I are thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to be given this award. I have to say that uh, listening to the two previous awardees who are many, many decades younger than we are, I know that there was a, somewhere in there, there was something about a life cycle. And um, they are about their beginning of a journey and although we're definitely not at the end, um, but still, um, the, the, the work that we've done is, has taken many decades. Um, we thank you, of course, for recognizing the work that we did, not just to create the museum, but also that connects Indian American communities in the United States and to the larger world. Um, I want to thank Nikhail Lakshmi, Editor-in-Chief of India Abroad, and of course Sri, who is the mover and shaker in this room. Uh, Donald and I were drawn to South Asia, especially India, as well as the Himalayas, ever since we bought our very first piece of artwork over 40 years ago. Auspiciously, it was a painting of Waitara, you just saw her there, a deity associated with longevity, and as I mentioned, <laughs> We are still here. She did her job. <laughs> um, as our collection grew, so did our very deep appreciation for the art and culture of the area and our commitment to share, display, and care for these works of art. We established a museum not only to exhibit objects, but also to engage our audiences in thinking about the larger ideas as well as the commonalities among world cultures. We need so much of that sharing today. An exhibition, excuse me, an exhibition on view last year as a part of the Rumi Museum's 10th anniversary. Uh, Francesco Clemente, inspired by India, took a close look at the artist's long relationship with the subcontinent. It features paintings and sculptures that explored traditional materials while reinterpreting ancient symbols, myths, and ideas. I hope you all got to see it because it was a very special exhibition. This fall, the museum will also have another special exhibition by a series of portraits. I'm so nervous, I'm so sorry. <laughs> a series of portraits by photojournalist Steve McCurry based on his travels throughout India. Please come and enjoy it. Our own experiences in India, from visiting temples and museums to being soaked in color during the festival of Holi, were transformational, if not overwhelming, and led us to appreciate the arts, culture, spirit, and people of this incredibly wonderful, rich, and diverse land even more. When I first visited India, personally, I had never been anywhere so filled with the force of life and spirituality. I recall hurrying back to my hotel room for respite, closing a door and saying, oh my God, it's too much. <laughs> you know, right? So only to be drawn back out the next day into the melee of, of all of that energy. From then on, I have truly been in love with that energy. In addition to collecting contemporary and centuries old works of art, Donald and I believe quite sincerely that art can be a vital tool to nurture creativity, educate, create community and promote positive social change. As a part of our engagement with the worldwide Indian community, our foundation has given grants to Indian organizations that support traditional arts, as well as educational and social programs to improve lives, health, and well-being. All things Indian have become an inseparable part of our lives, including all of you. So thank you again for this extraordinary honor. We couldn't be more pleased. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.